In theory, a genetic definition of modernity is the most straightforward and easiest to identify. If we think about a biological species concept as essentially a gene pool, a unified set of genetic variation, one separate from other species, that should give us an obvious way of defining modernity in a genetic context. We should simply be able to look at all the genetic variation present in living humans and extrapolate when that genetic variation began to appear. It's more complicated in practice, however. In practice, we share so much genetic variation with other related species, going back deep into our evolutionary past, that it's not simply a matter of looking at human variation, it's a matter of trying to identify which part of our entire human genome, which part of our genetic variation is really important, which part of it is really essential to that process of becoming human. And we can again look at that in a number of different ways. We'll look at this in the context of living humans this week, but next week we'll actually look at this in the context of fossil humans, where new technologies are allowing us to extract DNA out of fossils that are thousands of years old, giving us an amazing window into the evolution of our genome. But from a genetic standpoint, we can think of modernity, broadly speaking, as that sum total of variation that we see within living humans today, and especially that sum total of variation that's unique to humans that's different from the variation we see within chimpanzees or gorillas or other related species, but that appeared in the context of human evolution, the evolution of the hominins. So variation going back over, say, the last five million years. Now, again, it's important to recognize that our definition of genetic modernity in that context may differ from our definition of a species homo sapiens, in the sense that we've been continually evolving since we became homo sapiens. If you put the origin of homo sapiens 100,000 years ago, we've still undergone a lot of evolutionary change in that 100,000 years. Indeed, even if you put the origin of Homo sapiens simply 20,000 years ago, a date that no paleoanthropologist would really accept, we've still undergone a lot of genetic change over the last 20,000 years. So one of the complications with a genetic definition is that it's specific to this moment in time. And in fact, it's hard, we need to extrapolate backwards to the origin of our species to the origin of Homo sapiens to really understand what modern genetic variation actually looks like. So that's the challenge that we'll face this week in terms of looking at genetic variation and the genetic definition of what it means to be human.